I'm Bo Maddox with Robert Ortegon and Frankie Avila. This is Collateral Cinema. Welcome to Collateral Cinema, the only movie podcast that matters, where we focus on good movies, bad movies, and everything else in between in the world of cinema. We are podcasting straight from somewhere in South Texas, and yes, my friends, we are a 420-friendly podcast, so smoke them if you got them, my friends. Smoke them if you got them. I am here with Robert Ortegon and Frankie Avila. That's the right way to say it, right? Yes, sir. All right. And this episode, we've been anticipating for a while. Like, we got through that whole shit show that is called Food Fight, and now we're ready to do a good movie. And Robert went ahead and picked the movie for this episode. And Robert, what movie did you pick? I picked John Carpenter's original Halloween Oh yeah, that's right. John Carpenter's Halloween, ladies and gentlemen. Good old Michael Myers. Yeah, that's, this is a really great movie. I mean, it's not entirely flawless, but I don't know. It really is just timeless. It set the archetype for the slasher movie, like, yeah. in stone and everything. And it, it's really a lot of fun to watch, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. for the budget alone, I mean, how easy, he, easily he did it, you know, for that time period, 1978. You're uh -huh. totally right. I think it pretty much made a whole um, slasher genre of people that saw this movie and then they were able to find out how cheap it was produced and made. And it just, you know, made them inspired to also make slashers and stuff, even to this day. Scared the shit oh, out yeah. of everybody, basically. Yeah. <laughs> And the interesting thing is, is that the budget really influenced how the story kind of came out. Because it was originally going to be like almost a full week leading up to Halloween. That that's, was the whole timeline of the original script and everything. But because of the budget, they just couldn't really span out the uh, shooting and the production schedule and everything. So... They just had to make do with the money that they had, and they just took it all and condensed it into one night. For two, you know? for two movies. Yeah, for two movies. Exactly. Two movies. And, Frankie, this movie, it launched Jamie Lee Curtis's career. It also had Donald Pleasance in it. What did you think of the acting overall and... What did you think of well, like Donald Pleasance and Jamie Lee Curtis? Yeah, the whole point of Jamie this Lee Curtis really oh, just you know brought the scream, the and then also being a bad bitch coming <laughs> up at the end, you know, and then uh, she comes around part two too, and you know kicks ass. Original, oh yeah, original sc uh, scream queen. Yeah. The original scream queen. Yeah, she really just kind of influenced a whole bunch of other thrillers and uh, scary movie writers to have you know a scream queen i guess you would say yeah, plus there's the fact that it's a really really great independent film i mean this didn't have any actual like yeah you know studio backing behind it you yeah. know yeah it wasn't until later and you know until we got this pop culture thing going on oh yeah oh yeah, yeah especially Especially in the last uh, 15 or 20 years or so. I mean, horror has really kind of been on the rise lately. And it's really kind of, especially in the last five years, it's undergone a renaissance. And 
I mean, John Carpenter's style, it does keep on coming up as an influence. Yeah, I, I'm not you know. really 100% sure about um, horror movies and stuff, but uh, I believe it was one of the first, you know, gory, bloody... Well, I'll, I mean, I'll correct you there. It's actually not... The original movie is not that bloody. We got, uh... Okay. Yeah. It's pretty much inspired by Psycho, you know, Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah, and yeah. And Jamie Curtis's mother was in the uh, shower scene. Yeah, so, yeah. That's pretty dope. That is one good scene. Uh. Oh, it's an amazing scene. <laughs> yeah. And there, there's some scenes in uh, this movie where uh, Jamie Lee Curtis kind of reaches for those heights and kind of attains them a little bit. Mm. Right. She's able to fend him off, like, more than once. The only person able to do that, right? I mean, pretty, pretty much, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it also kind of ties into the... Uh, that particular dichotomy in horror movies where the final girl is usually kind of virginal and, you know, she her morals aren't uh, aren't corrupted, I should say, which wasn't even what uh, Hill and Carpenter were going for when they wrote that. Yeah. That, that wasn't even the trope that they wanted to set in stone. Yeah, because I mean, so. if so, I felt like they could have found a better actress for if they were trying to have that virginal kind of yeah i uh, mean you know then they got jamie lee curtis i don't know jamie like, lee curtis to me comes across as almost kind of asexual in this that's movie. what i was like, saying okay yeah yeah, yeah very, very asexual you know i mean she, she doesn't really seem to want to go for it i mean she does have a crush in the film i mean laurie yeah. strode the character she has a crush in the <clears throat> film but he never even really comes into play. Ben Tramer. Yeah, yeah Ben Tramer. He never comes into play in in the actual movie. But anyway, well, we're about to get into a movie synopsis here, folks. We wanted to go ahead and uh, make this intro a little shorter than usual. Usually, we'd go a good 15 or 20 minutes on this, but we really want to get to this because this is just going to be a lot of fun to talk about. Right, guys? Oh, yeah. Let's keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's going to be a lot to talk about. So, without further ado, we're going to have uh, Robert Ortegon give us at least a little synopsis or summary or whatnot of this movie, as we usually do. And after that, we will be back with our discussion. On a cold Halloween night in 1963, six-year-old Michael Myers brutally murdered his 17-year-old sister, Judith. He was sentenced and locked away for 15 years. But on October 30th, 1978, while being transferred for his court date, a 21-year-old Michael Myers steals a car and escapes from Smith Grove Sanitarium. He returns to a quiet town of Hatfield, Illinois, where he looks for his next victims. Halloween. Newsweek magazine calls it a superb exercise in the art of suspense, the most frightening flick in years. Halloween. The Chicago Sun-Times says it's so scary, I would compare it to Psycho. It's the kind of picture, says the Chicago Tribune, that forces you to sleep with the lights on. A masterpiece, says New York's New Times. Halloween, from Compass International, rated R. All right, thank you, Robert. We are back with the discussion part of the episode, where we will discuss John Carpenter's Halloween. And... This movie has been around for quite a while, and you'll say it's been around for 40 years, and it pretty much helped establish the slasher elements of the genre that so much of us grew up with. Uh, what does this movie mean to you guys, personally? It's probably one of the, the first horrors I've ever seen. I mean, I mean, it was one of the blockbuster ones that came out back when, you know, all the Halloweens came out. Yeah. Every blockbuster was releasing it, every Walmart, you know. So that's the first time I saw it, was just going to Blockbuster. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I just remember being a little kid and my dad or mom putting it on and it just being so scary. And then, uh, you know, not giving me nightmares or anything, but it was just scary. Oh, so, yeah. so your parents were uh, those parents, yeah, the cool parents. Yeah, they were the parents. cool parents to like, let you watch scary movies Return. when you're oh, like, yeah. five years old. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, so it definitely... I, I babysat some kids. Their parents were like that. They let them watch stuff like um, Friday the 13th. And yeah, I watched, the I watched oh, them yeah. all. I watched them all. Oh, yeah. Chucky. I mean, for me personally... <clears throat> Halloween wasn't really my entry into the slasher genre. I would say it was probably more Friday the 13th. Like, I mean, the first one is memorable to me. Nice. But so is the uh, first Halloween, though. I mean, everything about it, the cinematography, the directing, most of the acting, honestly. I mean, it really does kind of stand the test of time, and it really set the standards for the... Uh, 
particulars of, of the slasher genre. Yeah. You know? I just love how you have you, Freddy, you got Jason, and uh -huh. you got Michael, yeah. and then how they, uh, you know, all came from something small, budgeted and everything, and then eventually they just kind of blew up. Oh, yeah. And the fan base is amazing, and, you know, it's been around for years and years, and it's going to be there forever. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's a solid in little independent film. Yeah. I mean, something that came from something so small, it's just, it's so big. Nowadays, we oh, watch no. low budgets, and we're like, oh, it's a low budget. We've already yeah. seen the story a thousand times. That's been scripted a thousand uh -huh. times. You know what's going to happen. Oh, exactly. You know what's gonna happen. Gonna happen. Because we already watched <laughs> these three characters here, mm -hmm. and, you know, we've pretty much seen it in... Seen well, it all. this movie really showed that you can pull together a shoestring budget and make something that is actually kind of artistic and unique, yeah. you know? I mean, especially, like, a good example is the cinematography. Yeah. I mean, they they really worked with uh, what they had there, and, I mean, they made for some very interesting and memorable shots. Yeah, yeah. You know? Like, I mean, the very first uh, opening sequence of the movie, where... Michael Myers uh, takes goes through the house. He takes a uh, clown mask and he kills his sister. What did y'all think of that opening scene? It was oh. brutal. When yeah. I when I first saw it, or I don't remember if I, when I first saw it, but I'm, every time I do see it, it is brutal. It's just oh yes, hardcore oh, yes. six year old boy picking yeah. up a kitchen knife. Well, the perfect thing about it is is that you don't actually know that it's a six year old boy. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's in first person the whole time. And you don't know who the killer is. Yeah. And and it's shot in a way where it could literally be anybody. Yeah. You know, uh, I another... Mean, sorry for cutting you. Uh, no, another reason why it really affects me and it's so scary now that I watch it to this day is because when I was growing up that I was uh, around a kid who was crazy like this. Oh, Just wow. like Michael Myers. Oh, wow. And he did chase his sister around with a knife. Oh, and shit. And they ended up submitting him. And yeah, oh, and wow. he was a crazy little kid, and so every time I see this, it's just something that you know pops in my head. Could happen. It, oh yeah, it's very, very hundred percent possible. Oh yeah, very much so. I mean, that's what was so striking about it is that the realism. The realism was that the killer was human. He wasn't some supernatural. Like, well, he was supernatural later on later in the on, movies, yeah. but yeah. in this one, he was just a normal, normal man. A normal man. It's a I normal mean, Halloween night. You don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah with a, a normal. American town, you know, in, in mm -hmm. Illinois, you know, and disrupted family. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely that. I mean, but we only get kind of uh, glimmers of that in the first movie, I think. Yeah. You know, I mean, we don't really get to see uh, Michael Myers' uh, backstory yeah. in that, you know, which, You're right. which apparently was a big sin of the remake that Rob Zombie did. You know, that's kind of... Uh, he, he explained uh, the background story for Michael Myers. Yeah. And in some ways it may have worked, and in some ways it may not have. I can't really it say... It may have ruined it for future films. Yeah. Because yeah. you can't make another spin-off of, you know, like H2O or something. Yeah. Well, then again, they're already uh, taking the series in a different direction right now with the new, uh, with the new iteration of the series uh, helmed by... Uh, Produced by John Carpenter, but uh, Danny McBride is involved in it. Danny McBride you know? and David Green. David Green, yeah. They're both roommates in college, so they both, wow. they both, you know, just, hey, you want to make a movie? Sat around, they wrote down the script, they pitched the idea to John Carpenter, he fell in love with it, he gave him the go-ahead to go ahead and do it, you know? Oh, wow, that's amazing. Here you go. And doing... we were just watching a uh, an interview uh, with Danny McBride. Uh, on YouTube earlier, and he said that he, he's not really going to let on, you know, where that continuation is actually going to start, you know. Yeah, yeah, it can be from it can be part from two remake, part two in two thousand and nine, mm -hmm. Rob oh, Zombies. Yeah. It could be like right after Season of the Witch, or a or it could be right after Halloween too. Halloween yeah, Resurrection with yeah. the, you know. Yeah, I mean. Ha Halloween Resurrection, that that movie, or H two O and Halloween Resurrection, those are movies that are kind of a stickler for me because yeah. I really do think that the series ended perfectly at H two O. They ended that just spot on. But, they uh, didn't need to make anything yeah. other than that after that. No, you're right about that. Where you faked yeah. his own death and then they went on yeah. to and in the most inexplicable way possible. Yeah. 
Like, I mean, I still don't understand But you that. know, eventually, whenever we're about to die and we're old, we're probably going to have a Halloween 20. Yeah. <laughs> so they're going to continue. Oh, this, keep drawing yeah, it Yeah, this is going to continue on and on and on. I mean... Every five years or they, so. Well, they were already uh, about to begin rebooting uh, Friday the 13th at least a couple of years back, but uh, that kind of fell, fell through, through. You know, because... I did hear about that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Another guy from San Antonio, Texas, there. Woo! Stay town. Mm. Now, Donald Pleasance takes the top billing in this movie, and he he was originally a Bond villain. Am am I I correct? Yeah, he was. Yeah. uh, Sean Connery, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was Um, it Dr. No or something? It was Dr. No, I believe. And he's like, he was like the atypical Bond villain. I mean, he pretty much set the tropes for that in his own right. But here he plays completely against type in every way. I mean, he's a lot more subdued. He's uh, actually very, very... He plays his char- character very, very concerned about what's happening with Myers. Yeah, he, you know? he is He is pretty much my favorite character yeah. in the whole yeah, movie. Yeah, this whole movie was made for him. And he was much. in every yeah. single one except for, what, the last couple? Oh, uh, the one he died with in Paul Rudd, was it the Curse of Michael Myers? Right? Cur- yeah. Curse of Michael Myers? Yeah, yeah, yeah so, it was I mean, the sixth one, right? That was his last movie. So like, he was a diehard yeah. actor and character for the movie in the yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I mean he Kept made he made Sam Loomis his uh, character like completely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. I mean Malcolm McDowell did a good job from what I've seen in the Halloween movies. I mean I like it. I've seen a few clips on uh, of the Halloween remakes on uh, U- YouTube and whatnot. And Malcolm McDowell he does at least in the first movie he really plays a very interesting uh, angle on Loomis, you know? Yeah. Like for instance, the uh, yeah. the fact that he for a little while there, it actually seems like he's building a bond with uh, Michael yeah. Myers as a kid, yeah. trying to be his friend and trying to yeah. recoup. Actually, trying to like trying to reach him to rehabilitate, yeah. him. rehabilitate, him. Yeah, get through his brain and say that your fucked up life mm-hmm. is, could be different, and uh, it just don't work. The, the, yeah, the dysfunctional family plays more in the the backstory. Yeah, it definitely how bad does. He, he really got it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but in this movie, in Halloween, they don't worry about such, I don't know, what's the word? Ostentations, maybe? No, 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 not that. But, you know, they, they really just completely uh, eschew the backstory of Michael Myers altogether. Like, I mean, we, we know next to nothing about this character other than what he did, what, what was it? It was like 20 years prior in yeah. Yeah. when he was a kid. Yeah. We don't know anything beyond that, you know. But Donald Pleasance, I mean, he's the one that actually kind of uh, 
he helps kind of sets Michael Myers as a character more than anything. Yeah, really. actually, is a, a yeah, major, yeah. major influence on him was his own psychiatrist, right? Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Exactly. I mean, I would I would say that uh, Loomis is probably the progenitor of uh, what we know about Myers. You know, for all we know, he could have been the one that formed him the way he is. Oh yeah, easily. Because it always just shows him being the good doctor, but protecting him. But why would you want to protect him unless you know you're like. You, you fucked him, or he's just really that fucked. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, this very much. Some people's brains yeah. you can't crack. I mean, Seriously, because and because he he never tries to kill him, he always just tries to contain him. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I'd say that in this particular instance in the Halloween movie, he finally realizes, yeah, we're we're gonna have to probably kill this motherfucker. You know, yeah. we're, we're going to have to. Eventually, that's what it comes down to. Yeah, that because he knows that there is nothing there when it comes to this human being, I guess you could still say oh, at this when, point. When Loomis shot him six times in the original, you couldn't even believe it. It's like, oh, seriously? Dude, I unloaded my whole, my whole gun on you. Dang. Should be dead. And that's the great thing is that he kind of uh, bookends that entire movie. You know, I mean, yeah. he's the one who answers... Uh, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis's question, you know, about the boogeyman. He's just yeah. like, yeah, yeah, that was the boogeyman. That was them. Yeah. That was him. And and that's really, I think, what ultimately left everything up in the air as to whether or not Myers was supernatural. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't you know? become supernatural to like, the, the third and fourth, or the season of the witch one, but the fourth one and the fifth one, oh, it's yeah. like almost superhuman. Like, <clears throat> oh, very much we're so. We're not dealing with a regular man here, you know? No, no, but, no. He's pretty much like uh, Jason Voorhees level yeah, right there. Yeah, exactly. Super Shredder status. Yeah, he may as well be like fucking Pinhead. Jesus. Yeah. I met him 15 years ago. I, I was told there was nothing left. No reason, no uh, conscience, no understanding, and even the most rudimentary sense of life or death, of good or evil, right or wrong. I met this six year old child with this blank, pale, emotionless face and the blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. I spent eight years trying to reach him and then another seven trying to keep him locked up because I realized that what was living behind that boy's eyes was purely and simply evil. What do we do? He's been here once tonight. I think he'll come back. I'm gonna wait for him. I still think I should notify the radio and tell them. No. If you do that, they'll see him on every street corner. They'll look for him in every house. Just tell your men to keep their mouth shut and their eyes open. I'll check back in an hour. And Jamie Lee Curtis... This was her first real role here. Like, I think she did some commercial work here and there, maybe something a little smaller. I'm not entirely sure, but she really stepped into the role here in a very, very splendid way, I think, you know? Probably going in blind, too. Don't know what you're doing. Completely but... blind. I mean, she was only, I think, she, she was like 19. She part on accident, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, her mother being a, the other... Was it Lee, Lee Curtis? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jan Janet Lee. Janet Lee Curtis, yeah. There but no, she's not even a Curtis. It was just Janet Lee. Janet Lee. Yeah. I think I think Jamie Lee Curtis, I mean, she took the name she has mainly so she wouldn't be living in her mom's shadow specifically. Yeah, you're right. You know? I mean, actors' names are different. You go on with oh, very people. different. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, she really, really also kind of makes this movie what it is in many ways. And really, she's the one who, where the final girl trope actually starts. I mean, she's she's virginal, you know? She doesn't seem interested in any type, anything sexual, really. It's like, pretty much open the door for all women badasses, you know, like Sigourney Weaver. Really? Like, like Heather Wagenkamp. There you go. And, you know, Heather Wagenkamp, like definitely. Can, like, women can beat our asses now. <laughs> like, I mean, uh, Linda Blair, even. Linda she became Blair. She became a scream queen uh, when she grew up after The Exorcist. Exorcism? Oh, oh yeah. I mean, she was... And she was very beautiful and very talented. She still is. The Scream you know? Queen. Nev Campbell. Nev Campbell. Uh, she took that. Emma Roberts, too. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Easily. 
But, I mean, yeah, Jamie Lee Curtis really kind of set the uh, tropes. She, she codified all the tropes for that particular type of character. Now, it, it does lead to some problems, more or less, you know, because it kind of keeps the, the virgin horror dichotomy kind of in a perpetual cycle, you know. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that time and time again to very negative effect in the horror genre. Now all the rules change now, dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the rules are completely different now. When very, you die. <laughs> very different. Very different. I mean, horror horror is very different now, you know? I mean, you compare horror now to where this was, uh, when, to where it was when this movie came out. Yeah, the game's I mean, changed completely now. But, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I was saying. Like, if we were to see this nowadays, we'd be like, it's a low budget. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it would probably be something like a Full Moon production or yeah, something yeah. of that degree. Exactly. And I love Full Moon, so, I yeah. mean, there's those diehard fans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know yeah they, they, they have a, a lot of interesting releases on that particular they have label. Thousands. Yeah. And they, they also have the uh, Grindhouse, the, uh, yeah. the Full Moon Grindhouse label as well, where they have more of the straight exploitation type movies. I mean, I, I was uh, shopping at DVD Exchange just yesterday, and I found quite a few of those movies. And, you know, they they all look pretty interesting. Yeah, they have them there. Sometimes you find them at Dollar General. Yeah. Oh, yeah, find you find them at Dollar yeah. General. Four easily. set. You never know. know what you find in the bin. Yeah. Got a four yeah. set, four for one. But, yeah, that, that's pretty much the category of movie that this would be if it came out, like, right now. Yeah. Y'all are right. I mean, it would pretty much be of that caliber. But they're know? the ones that, you know... Just pretty yeah. much helped now, everybody else get an idea of how to make a horror. It opened the door in yeah. general for like horror, actually. Oh yeah, it opened the door in many, many different ways. People can do things with a camera now, first person. Oh yeah, yeah. So many camera tricks you can do. And, and that goes back to the budget, you know? It goes back to the fact that they just didn't have a whole lot to work with there. No. Yeah. You know? I mean, they had to use many of the camera tricks they used because... To do otherwise would have been just too expensive. It'd be like the equivalent of making a film with an iPhone today. No. Yeah, pretty much. It, it, yeah, you're right. It would be the equivalent of that right there. We still watch know? it, right? We still watch that stuff. Oh yeah, I mean, there's mm -hmm. there's been a couple of good movies that have been filmed on on iPhones, I've, from I've what I understand. Yeah, yeah. Now Jamie Lee Curtis, she was also in another. Uh, <sighs> Another John Carpenter film, The Fog, mm -hmm. which is an honestly another favorite movie of mine. I mean, honestly, it's 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 almost like a bloodless zombie movie kind of. Fog is crazy. Yeah. What was the main actor in that one too? Oh, uh, the main actor. Well, Janet Lee was actually in that movie as well. That was another interesting thing. It's gonna it be a uh, John Carpenter, Jamie Lee Curtis, and. Adrian Barbeau. Adrian, Adrian Barbeau. Barbeau. She she was married to uh, John Carpenter at that time, you know, and she she was also in Escape from New York. Yeah, another Carpenter. Film. Yeah, see, look, Janet Lee was in there, was in that movie as well. That that's a, that's a favorite movie of mine, and to me, it has a lot of the same flourishes that the uh, that Halloween has, you know, as far as cinematography and directing Escape and from New York. Yeah. yeah, and and also, you know, I mean, Jamie Lee Curtis, she's the link between those and. I mean, she doesn't play the main character in that movie. She plays a, uh, what, is, what, what does she play? She plays more of a side character, like she's hitchhiking. Yeah, you're right, and he picks her up. Yeah, he picks yeah, her up, they, they sleep They sleep together. Like, yeah. you, you know, like see, that always seemed to happen in the 80s, right, right, guys? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was just reading a little bit on this, and I love how it says they won the role. They won the role. They huh? won the role, right? It was always a competition. What did you have to do? Won the role. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like Adrian yeah. Barbo, she, he, she was married to John Carpenter, like I just said. It's like, yeah. he, he, he was pretty much pulling a Rob Zombie, Sherry Moon Zombie Jeez, there, man. pretty much. So except, well. except the difference there is Adrian Barbo can act. That's right, I said it. <laughs> I said it, god damn it. And I love Sherry Moon Zombie, but come on, girl. Just come on. <laughs> Seriously, she, she's no Jamie Lee Curtis. No, 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 man. She, oh, she, yeah. She's barely a Heather Lagenkamp. Oh, we forgot a prom night, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Jamie Lee Curtis was night. in prom night. Yeah, that was a Canadian movie, right? Yeah, it was filmed in Canada. That's yeah. one. Yeah, 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 man. Like, that's a... That, that was right was after a... she did the first Halloween, and then... And then she did the second Halloween, like in the 80s. Yeah, you yeah. showed that movie to me not too long ago. Maybe like a month or two ago. Yeah, that's not But even then, now that we see like Prom Night, even though 
like then it was like oh that was scary it was a good budget movie but now we watch it compared to budget movies now yeah and we're like that is still a low mid-budget movie well the good the thing about the 80s is that a lot of their low budget movies because they were just really kind of trying all those different techniques yeah. for you that know? for that time i mean the suspense yeah. Yeah. was supposed to kill you really yeah, yeah. i mean they they really made did the same thing that uh, halloween did they made do with what they did and sometimes it hit the mark and sometimes they didn't yeah. you know Hit or miss, pretty much. Oh, I mean, that's that guy, uh, Leslie Nielsen. He's oh, Leslie, prom, that's right. right. Leslie yeah. Nielsen was in prom, prom right. Nielsen. That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> awesome, man. That is. <laughs> I, did, I didn't know that. <laughs> so, Deborah Hill and John Carpenter co-wrote and produced this movie together. Robert, do you know how they uh, actually came to know each other and how, how a, the writing of this movie came to be? I'm not really sure. Maybe really? I, I think I overlooked that, but... Yeah. They yeah. just, uh, you know, after that, they really filmed everything else after that. Like, she escaped from New York. She's Halloween 2. She, yeah, she's, yeah. She produces and co-writes all the stuff, you know, really. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ever and since she, that. And she, she's a director and actress herself, right? I think so. I think she is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't think, I don't know if I've ever seen anything that she's done. I'm not sure. At, at all. Like, I'm not entirely positive. You know, have, have you seen anything from her, Frankie? I'm actually not familiar. With Deborah not Hill familiar Hill. with Deborah Hill, the producer. No. Not with the name, but I'm sure if I have seen it, I've right. seen it. Yeah. Because <laughs> I mean, that that's something that honestly I kind of neglected to look up as well as yeah, what else I, she's I'm bad with produced. Directors, producers, <laughs> all that stuff. Well, I'm I'm a total director. Actors. I'm a total director kind of guy, but I mean, I know plots and stories. Don't know a whole lot about the producers. Characters. Yeah. Yeah, Plot stories and characters, what I can tell you. And then uh, Robert over here, he'll be only, like, only it's thing, that movie. Only thing I know about movie producers is fuck Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> <laughs> fuck Harvey Weinstein. Fucking asshole. But yeah, I mean, they said that this movie was very much uh, a spiritual successor to Psycho, very much, which, you know, is very interesting given the the link with Jamie Lee Curtis being uh, the daughter of Janet Lee, who was yeah. in Psycho. You know, I mean, did y'all see any of the flourishes of that particular, or any of the influences of that particular movie in Halloween? Or she was almost just like her mother. Like, oh yeah, very much so. But also, but also in like the uh, scene composition and the direction and, you know, the screenplay and whatnot. Like, I mean, did, did you kind of see that in there a little bit? It might have just been something very familiar with how the directing and the... Yeah, I mean, there, there was a few there was a few shots in the movie I would say was vaguely Hitchcockian, you know, especially yeah. especially involving the Myers house and the Strode house. And, yeah. You know, just that general neighborhood, in, like, period. Where it just keeps flashbacking to where all the places he's been. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. Indicating he could really be anywhere, you know? Yeah, that that, that was the best uh, part of the, of the movie is just the claustrophobia of mm. it all. You know, and then that's that's some solid writing right there. You know, that means that even though Michael Myers doesn't have any speaking parts, even though, you know, we, we don't really get to know who he is, he's still so effective because of that atmosphere that they create. I mean, they, they, they do, they create that feeling that he could literally be right behind you right now. Yeah. Oh, the heavy breathing, too, right? Yeah, like, the heavy breathing, which they kind of phased out of the next uh, several yeah. movies. Yeah, exactly. When, when honestly, it, it actually kind of undercut that whole, you know, atmosphere that they were going It made the for. first one scary as shit, and I think that's what McBride is trying to do. He's trying to redo the first one. I mean, not, yeah. not entirely yeah. though, it is, like, normal body, and then also had, like, super, superhuman strength, though. Yeah. Yeah. Able to lift yeah. you up, like, easy. Well, there, there were... It's that hard strength, bro. Right? And, and in some ways, it kind of worked. In some ways, it didn't, because there were several people who play, actually played Michael Myers in this film. Like, Nick Castle is the one who's, uh, he's the shape. The original, you know? the actor, he's yeah. actor, director. Yeah, but he was, he was maybe actually in costume and in the mask, like, only a few times in that movie. Yeah, I did see And... That. You know, there's a rumor that John Carpenter may have uh, donned the mask. Put on the mask. For, uh, Anybody could have put it on, yeah. Yeah. I, and I think they said that, I, I read that it said that there was a couple of production assistants that uh, also got into the costume whenever Nick Castle wasn't uh, wasn't available. Yeah. And another thing is, we do see him unmasked at the end of the first one. Yeah. That's yeah, never it, happened. Like, and, he, and he looks like a, a normal person. 
He looks like a normal dude. I mean, there's, I mean, it's not like Jason who was already deformed and kind of <laughs> ghoulish looking to begin with. No, oh, yeah. no he offense came out of to the lake. No offense to people with physical ailments or disabilities. Yeah, sorry but, for you guys. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he was... That's what kind of undercut how scary he was, was that underneath that mask, he was so normal. He seemed so normal, but what was even deeper psychologically was was what was abnormal. That's where his yeah, actual ugliness resided. That's what makes you curious about what he's thinking about. What is, you know, sparking this? Yeah. What yeah. triggers this guy? Yeah, what, what triggers what, this serial killer? Why? Like, every and, Halloween night, you know? And and that, that's the thing. In, in the why, original, why, why? In the original Halloween, according to Loomis, there is no trigger to it. There's no point to it. He's just evil. Just a straight serial killer. And yeah. his sister. What's yeah. Kill? Well, we don't know that he that she's his sister up to this point. That's Halloween two, right? Yeah, Halloween yeah. two. Halloween yeah, yeah. two is where we actually find out the very first time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. kind of like a Leia Luke thing, you know? Yeah, kind of, sort of. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? in a weird way. Like uh, that's your brother who tried to kill yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But overall, the writing of this movie is really, really solid, right? I mean, yeah, it's, oh, yeah. for what it is. I mean, for what they had. I mean, you you guys are both aspiring filmmakers and. Robert, you do some writing. I mean, what what do you think about the that aspect of the film? Um, you know what? For that time, and the gross and the budget, and you know, I mean, worldwide and internationally, it made like over seven million. Yeah, yeah, seventy yeah. million. You know. Yeah, but I mean, what what do you think? How do you think the writing of the movie impacted that? Pretty. It was pretty basic. Mm-hmm. You know, and for that time, you know, they didn't have anything. Yeah, they they you know had it scared, it scared yeah. the shit out of you for real. It's like the first of its kind, really, almost. You know? mm -hmm. And and that really, it's the writing of the movie that really anchors it. Yeah, I right? mean, yeah. It, I, uh, it's been a big inspiration. I mean, everything that you you everything want to start to do. down, that's always going to be popping in your head. Like, oh, sh how are we gonna? Uh, it's gonna be like Halloween. No, nah, we can't do that. It's like you can't even you start an original story because it's all been done. Even what we yeah. try to do, just, we try to yeah, Halloween, you know. Jason. Friday the 13th is like, yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. always the big inspiration that's ever been, I don't know, they're big inspirations. They really are. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, certainly, certainly. I mean, yeah, I mean, John Carpenter just in general as a director, I mean, his, his influence is just so vast and so stark, like, especially now, like, 40 years after his first original movie. Exactly. You know, I mean, I mean, his his style is pretty much being evoked in Stranger Things, and in a movie like, uh, Be I think it's called Beyond the Void, or Beyond the Gates, or something like Stranger that. Stranger Things, that Netflix original? Yeah, so Stranger what? Things, yeah. Oh, that's that has favorite. That has a Stephen King's vibe, but also it has very much kind of a Carpenter vibe to it. Oh, yeah, you know? I love that Stranger Things. And a lot of that is goes down, back to the music, you know, which Carpenter 80s. wrote. You know? I mean, a lot of that is very Carpenter-esque, and the interesting thing about that is he's not really someone who's well-versed in, you know, reading and writing music. See anything you like? matter can I get your ghost Bob <laughs> all right all right come on where's my beer well can't you answer me okay don't answer me oh, are you weird well, I'm gonna call Lori. I wanna know where Paul and Annie are. This is going nowhere. Finally. Hello? Uh, 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 Hello? Uh, 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 All right, Annie. First I get your famous chewing, now I get your famous squealing. I'll kill you if this is a joke. Annie! Annie? 
I really, really like the writing of this movie as well. And the and John Carpenter's directing, I mean, how he actually translates that, I mean, it really just accentuates every ounce of suspense in this movie. Oh, yeah, that that's always the main thing. Like Robert said, it's a suspense. Suspense. Yeah, and, and it's it's, like, like, you know, it's like, like waiting for Jaws. You only yeah. see like a fin, and then yeah, at the end you get scared. Yeah. It's a 25-foot yeah. gray white, dude. And, and yeah, the, <laughs> well, the, the, half the time you're waiting, and then yeah. nothing happens, right? That's, supposed, that's like, supposed to oh, kill you. And then it, scare you, you get relieved. Yeah, 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 yeah. You get real comfortable with well, it, and you walk. In, oh, shit, boom. In this movie, the analog to that is the fact that there's always some level of distance between at least in the first half of the movie there's distance between Michael and his victims and also a distance but kind of a distance between him and Loomis that in the next half of the movie becomes a little yeah you're like it, it, he come he becomes a little closer when, yeah when, when's he gonna get there you know? when's he gonna catch up with them yeah. But but there's several times where and Loomis cool. where Loomis comes within a hop and a skip of Myers himself in the movie. Oh yeah, you know? pretty much like at a crossroads almost. Yeah, at he a crossroads. Yeah, he him. passes him right behind him, and like he spends all night staking out the uh, neighborhood with the Strode house and the Myers house and everything, and he doesn't even notice that his car is parked literally a block away. Right down the street, and it's walking. right down the fucking street, and near the end of the movie, I mean. When he actually sees the uh, uh, Leslie and Tommy running out of the of uh, the Strode house, I mean, that's when he realizes, oh shit, it's like right in front of me. It's right in front of me. This it's is been, happening. Yeah, yeah th this has been happening under our noses this whole time. And at the same time, he has no idea that Lori Strode is a sister. Yeah, at he that no, point, he has no idea. Well, at that point, nobody does. Why he's even chasing her? You know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's just. So. Meant to kind of be that, you know, that Jaws Finn moment, you know, where, and where that music just kind of kicks in and it just sells that suspense. Yeah, it definitely you know? takes you by the balls. Yeah, and, and part of that is the score, that iconic song, you know, that... That is just... Let me, let me amazing, get that for you. Yeah, amazing songwriting. It pretty much shit. is. Yeah, the shit, yeah. Like, really. Yeah, I mean, it's... Very, very simple. A very simple yeah. little progression. You don't know what's going to happen, what this guy's you know, going to do. But, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's so edgy. Can we throw that on? It's so... There we go. You know, urgent. It is scary. It's scary. It is. It's just it is. Certainly. Yeah. Every time you hear it, you just see the face. That's made, dude. Oh, man. Oh, certainly, yeah. I mean, right, right now, I almost want to, you know, look behind, look behind yeah, me, you know? Exactly. Where the hell is it? <laughs> it's dark outside. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, and once again, it, it, it adds to that whole feeling that he could be anywhere. Anywhere. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's amazing. I, I love that song. Yeah, I love sure. that track. Did he yeah. also do the Stranger Things? I don't think that he did, but I do know that he will be doing the composing the music for the new Halloween movie. Yeah, I think so nice. too. Yeah, he's also uh, executive producing. We're that. gonna we're gonna try to go back to the original roots on this one. I think. Oh, I hope so. That's man. what he's trying to do. Yeah, yeah. Make him less and more supernatural and more of a man. Like, yeah, yeah. When he was actually really, really, really menacing, yeah. you know, and it was like you know this could really happen. You know, yeah. no cults trying to use him as a weapon. You well, know? we have no idea where he's going to pick off from. It could be any one of them. Mm -hmm. Seriously. And honestly, I think that it could be interesting either way. Either way, either way it goes, it could yeah, be interesting. He's not saying where, where he's going to pick off from. Mm. Yeah. Well, the budget of this movie was between 300000 and $325,000. And it... To this day, it remains one of the mo not only one of the most profitable indie movies of all time, but just one of the most profitable profitable movies of all time. It made forty seven million dollars gross at the box office and twenty three million dollars internationally. Seventy million dollars combined worldwide, like it sold thirty million tickets. Yeah. I mean, this was a, ju a cultural juggernaut, you know. Yeah, on the, it, was, on, it's, it was on the same level as something like Exorcist. Yeah, it was know? followed oh, by yeah. seven sequels. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, quite a few movie, uh, horror movies from that time uh, got sequels and everything. But of course, the, still, I I actually really really like uh, John the uh, Halloween that came after this, Halloween Two. 
to me, I, I kind of feel like uh, the characters are a little more realized, you know? Like, we established the link between uh, Laurie oh, and Michael. And it's the same night, too. And it's all in the same night, same yeah. It's night, an actual yeah. continuation of Halloween night. Yeah, yeah. it picks up where the first one left off. Yeah, yeah, and, and it does so perfectly. I mean, and it, it starts I, off where his body's missing from the lawn. Oh, yeah. And that's oh. where we were talking about. And, like, and that's when the, the music hell? plays. You see the imprint of his body? Yeah. <laughs> and then it goes yeah. back to all that's the houses. That's where Loomis shot him. Oh, yeah. Him. Oh, yeah. And Loomis, and then, you know, he stares off into the night. He's like, oh. And then Lori, he's she's like, in the shit. hospital. Lori's in the hospital. So. Yeah, and I think that she really does kind of accurately portrays the trauma that somebody like Lori would would have gone through, even though she did fight him off. I mean, she still went through hell. I mean, her friends were... They, all her friends. They were all butchered. Yeah, she know? was given up for adoption. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, going back to the fate of her parents, you know, and of her sister. Like, her sister's name was Judith Strode, right? Judith or Judith, Judith Myers. Judith Myers. Oh I yeah, yeah. That's Strode's right. adopted the, the Strodes adopted her. That, that's yeah. right. That's right. But yeah, I mean that one. He burns in flames. Mm-hmm. He burns at the end of part two, and then <laughs> season of the witch is right there, which has nothing to do with Michael Myers at all. So, oh yeah, yeah. It's weird. Yeah, and this was the first in a long line, as we said before, of slasher films that can trace his lineage back to Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, you know? Like, I mean, if you want to kind of uh, determine, like, a timeline of slasher movies, typically it's, like, Psycho, and then it goes on to, like, Black Christmas, and, like, a lot of the Giallo, the Gialli films from uh, Italy, you know, like Argento and Bava, you know, they made some movies that really influenced the slasher genre, but... It all just kind of coalesced into this movie and Friday the 13th, which, to me, I think, in many ways, are almost like companion pieces in a weird way. Yeah. Like, what, what do y'all think? Trying to outdo one another. You got Paramount trying to outdo New Line. Uh-huh. You know? Uh-huh. Them trying to pitch stories to each other, trying to get hired, you know? Oh, yeah. Even for oh, Nightmare yeah. on Elm Street, what they try to do, going back and forth from Paramount to New Line, you know? Oh, yeah, trying yeah. Trying to get a job. <laughs> yeah, I mean, seriously. I mean, I I actually really like watching these two movies as a double feature because, I mean, I think that it's just probably the perfect creep factor of just going throughout both movies that just doesn't stop, you know? It doesn't, it's, it doesn't relent at all. There were a couple of other films that were shown throughout this movie as well, and that's uh, The Thing from Another Planet, which incidentally John Carpenter would remake as remake. The Thing. The Thing with Kurt Russell again. With Kurt Russell again. Uh, yeah, after Escape from New, New York. York. Donald Pleasance was in there too. Yeah, yeah, he was. It didn't didn't Donald Pleasance play the uh, president? He was, was the that? president. Yeah. He was the president. They were keeping the president hostage. And yeah, man, he was he was really great in that movie as well because, I mean, the the great thing about him and as the president is that he was nameless. Like, I mean, <laughs> they didn't really name who, who he, like they didn't give him a name. They didn't show what his actual political affiliation was. He's you know? just president. Yeah, yeah, he's just president, and he's trying to do some underhanded, shady bullshit with this uh, with this tape that he had. And that you know, that's why Kurt Russell destroys the tape at the end. Sabotage. But yeah, go, going back to uh, to Halloween and and the different movies that were playing throughout. I mean, the thing from Another Planet. I mean, that was also apparently a movie that helped to kind of influence uh, the the writing of this film a little bit, mainly because of the claustrophobia. Like that, that really kind of uh, uh, is where that came from, you know. You're scared in the corner, like yeah, watching over your shoulder. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, and that that was definitely uh, emblematic of both versions of the thing. Now, the actual plot of this movie, like it's starting, like as we as we said before, it starts off with the whole scene where Michael kills his sister Judith. Now, after that, we. Uh, we go to Haddonfield, it's like, what, 15, 20 years later, or something like that. Oh, uh, uh, 15 years later. It's 15 years yeah. later, yeah. And, you know, the Myers house is completely abandoned. I'm guess Yeah, he goes back, because I'm guessing that's all he knows, right? Yeah, that that's all he that's knows. That's all he knows. Yeah. He's been wanting to go Being back. locked up from a six-year-old boy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but remember, that's what Loomis thinks that he's going to do, yeah. but... 
he doesn't do that. He goes after Lori. Yeah, the cops don't know what he's doing. It's been 15 years. Yeah. It's been almost 20 years. They don't know what he's going to do. Yeah, but it, it starts with the, the aforementioned uh, stalking between that Michael does with Lori and her friends. Hiding in the background. You know, always in the background lurking, from a distance. Lurking, dude, just waiting. And even still finds ways to be menacing, you know, even when he's not in the background. Like the scene where, like, uh, he uh, almost uh, runs them over and... Uh, he stops in in the middle of the street and looks like he's about to reverse after yeah. Lori and her friends say something to him. Yeah. Keeps going. Like that right there is just ominous. That's spooky as so hell. It's like and he just keeps driving. I yeah. mean street stalker. I mean any given road rage nowadays, anytime something like that happens, you're just gonna be like, Oh shit. It's like am I getting into something here? Like Yeah. You know Is this guy gonna get out of his car with something? Like really? Yeah, exactly. And but that right there, it was just really impactful because I mean, makes you think. Oh, she's yeah. too hot to kill. No, I mean it. It, it just really undercuts the claustrophobic uh, elements of the film. He is always there. Always. He's well, always in the him. background, and Lori, <laughs> Lori sees him, but her, her friends they do not. Her friends don't see him. They don't see her. They don't. They don't He's see always disappeared. That's yeah. why we have. The, he has a super he powers. They he think, goes behind the tree real quick. Yeah, they think she's seeing things. And yeah. he's, he's super fast. He sees. She sees him from outside her, her window, right? Because he, he walks. And slow. Then he disappears. He walks super slow, and then all of a sudden he's there. It's like, yeah. how does he transport? Yeah, I think that I think the same question has been asked about uh, Jason. <laughs> oh, in the all past. Of them. and uh, I mean, oh, but usually for... the teleportation angle that's usually attributed to Jason. You know, because I mean that that better right. that better explains how he's able to just pop up in the right places to kill people out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Next up, we are introduced to Tommy at at his school, and the the bullies they tease him about uh, being scared of the boogeyman. Boogeyman. Now, what, what do you think? Where do you think that came from? You know, he's just something that's scary, really. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like what? What do you th what do you think is the uh, underlying uh, story between Tommy and those bullies? Probably an older class, probably yeah. just picking on him because yeah. he's a little kid, right? Honestly, though, they they look a way older mm -hmm. than Tommy. Like like they probably shouldn't even be in the same school. Yeah, yeah. you know, it's like, goddamn, did y'all just trek over here just to fuck with this one little kid? And They're just picking on him, dude. They yeah, straight straight tripped him up and busted his pumpkin. And his pump, yeah, dude. It's like, like, oh man! Like every time I see that, I'm just like, oh, what an asshole move, mm -hmm. man! St total dick move. That's terrible. Oh yeah, it happens every day. Yeah, I probably then, the guy that tripped him. But <laughs> then that leads to one of the more memorable kind of jump jump scares of the movie. Like one of the bullies, they uh, run along. They're they're running off, and then Michael is just there, like. He, you don't see his head. You just see his body. He just grabs one of them, and then he looks up, and the kid is just like, "Oh shit!" About to piss, him. Him. About to piss himself. Really. Oh yeah, straight up. He was just. He, he was just. Body slam. He, he saw the face of God right there, the face of death right the there. And he was just dead, like, "Oh yeah. fuck!" Yeah. Then he continues following Tommy. Yeah. In his car. Oh yeah. So he follows both of them. See, and then he's staring us. He's staring at. You know, uh, Lori Strode outside her classroom window, too, right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. He's there he was, for just a second. For just a second, he uh, stops, and he's in the he's in the station wagon, Yeah, right? he's, he's in the window right there, and then she's got to answer a question to the teacher or something, and then he's just, mm -hmm. he's gone like two seconds. Right? See, that, that right there, that's another trope that's been used in a lot of slasher movies before. Like, it always goes back to uh, to uh, the, the final girl, like, always seeing the killer in the background, but then... Then the killer disappears and they're not believed. It's like that really starts with Halloween. Outside the school, and then there was falling. Yeah, a lot of falling. Uh -huh. And then in the back, I would have been. I saw this guy three times. I'm not losing my mind. Like yeah. Yeah. I'd be like yeah. That's like scream like see him. Then there we go. Oh yeah, definitely, I've definitely. This, I've seen this guy more than once. What is what's, what's going on? Oh, 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 I can no longer so.
Captain to crew, stand by to reverse polarity. Standard Class A security will be maintained upon landing. And until further notice, all hands will wear sidearms. That is all. Artificial gravity off. Half lux. Cut primary coils. Primary's cut, sir. <laughs> Now, who is the first uh, person to be killed in this movie? This is the mechanic. The mechanic. Yeah, that's right. The mechanic. Takes the coveralls with the Donald Pleasance. Yeah. Not not seeing it. Yeah, that's another example of Loomis not seeing, like, being in very close proximity of Michael Myers, but never actually seeing him. Or, like, in in that case, he didn't even find the aftermath of, uh, of Michael's murder there. Yeah. Like, the mechanic was off in the brushes. He's he throwing the weeds, yeah. He didn't yeah. see him. All that he found was the tow truck and the and the gowns, the and hospital gowns. And book matches that he gave. Yeah, yeah, them. yeah. Yeah, that, that's an interesting little angle right there. Maureen, the, Maureen Chambers, I think. That, yeah, that's Ma- right. give him to Maureen Chambers. Like, it turns out she dropped him in the station wagon, and Michael grabbed them. Yeah. And left them at that scene. So, like, Red Rabbit on or something? Blue Rabbit? Something like that. Something Rabbit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But after that... After that, who is the next kill after the the mechanic? It's one of uh, Laurie's friends, right? Actually, technically, it's the dog. It's the German Shepherd. It's the German he Shepherd freaking, that's killed. He Ma. strangles outside the window. And they, I hate they that part. But they do kind of shoot it in a way where it's obvious that they're not being cruel or actually hurting the dog. I mean, I mean, if anything, it almost looks like they just have it like hugging the dog, and, and the again, dog just again, you don't even see his face. Too. Yeah, you never see his face there. That spooky sh- camera works. So talk, yeah, cinematography. Yeah, you don't actually see his uh, actual mask like in, in full effect until like the last quarter of the movie, right? Yeah. At the very least. Right when he pops out of the shadows. Finds it. Yeah, and she she sees all her friends just like hanging from oh, the yeah. ceilings and coming up yeah. the falls. They're all dead bodies already. Yeah. And and the first and the first of her friends to die is the uh, well, she her name sees, was Annie, right? Yeah, she sees the Judith Myers headstone that's over the bed. Oh yeah, and that's yeah. That's her best friend right there too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that that's a little yeah, that's a little later on in the movie. That's the that, that, that's the girl with her boyfriend who goes to Annie's house to have sex, and yeah. then she's strangled with a, with a telephone cord. And again, uh, yeah, he killed her. Kill, the, yeah, he killed her boyfriend. Strangled but, her in the backseat of that car before slitting her throat. Remember? Yeah, that, that, was, that was Annie, I Annie. believe. Yeah. yeah. She, she was kind of the, uh, oh, the, the smart one. mouth. Yeah, the other yeah. one was... She was the valley girl. She like totally, like totally oh, this and totally that oh, and totally, totally that. Chain smoking cigarettes. The cheerleader, one, the cheerleader one, yeah, was hung or uh, strangled with a telephone cord. Yeah, yeah. And on the other line, it appeared for Lori that <clears throat> uh, it appeared to be that they were making love or something, you know. Yeah, something or, uh, like that. You know, it's, kind it sounded of. kind of fucking. Uh, it sounded like something like that. It and she was kind just of like, sleazy, like moaning and groaning, you know, like. Hmm. Yeah, and, and Lori's just like, are, "Are you playing a joke on me? What are you doing?" Right. You know, but she's actually being strangled right. to death. Squealing, like what are you doing? You getting off the pole or something? <laughs> yeah, I mean, seriously, it's so it's so ridiculous. But yeah, also. Later on, when uh, Michael and actually starts stalking Lori, like first Tommy is the first one to really see him. Oh, he um he sees outside the window because he's trying to play a, a prank. Yeah. On his own best friend, Lindsay, little Lindsay Wallace, right? There. Yeah, little Lindsay Wallace. Oh yeah. And he sees him carrying the other babysitter through the house, like lifeless body. 
Uh huh. It's like, right. yeah, that's pretty. So that spooked him. He's like, so yeah, the boogeyman is real. It's like, it's the boogeyman, the boogeyman. Like he, at one point, he even straight freaks out when he sees him. Like straight up freaks out. Like, ah, it's a boogeyman. It's a boogeyman. It's the boogeyman, and uh, nobody's nobody believes him. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a little Cassandra truth there, sort kind of sorta. Kind of like a. You know, because he's been going all night with the story of the boogeyman, you know? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's an interesting angle to the story as well, is the whole allusions to the boogeyman. Like, like, what did you make of that? You know, for little kids at that time, it's like they're trying to figure out well, what's the boogeyman, you know? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, know. That's when you're really starting to... Something you tell little kids. Yeah, yeah that, that's when you're starting to really see what fear, what fear is, and you start to kind of... Figure out what the flight and uh, the fight and flight response is like. You know, it's like that, that's that's what's kind of developing at that point, and th that's why I I think that you know kids kind of deserve to have their own types of horror movies, uh, you know, marketed to them. You know, because kids the kids like to be scared like that. Oh no. You know, I mean, th this is a movie that if it wasn't for some of the. Uh, for some of the nudity, I mean, you could totally show it to a younger kid. Yeah. I mean, it's it's really not any more bloody than, like, than, than your average Hitchcock movie back in the day. Yeah, really. Yeah. Alfred Hitchcock, was it? Master uh, even the nudity art? nowadays, I, I don't feel like it's wrong to show your kids, you know, and, I mean, you only see some well, boobs. It's not. It's, it's not. not like it's, it's not the worst porn. It's not the worst thing in the world. No, no. it's not like it's full on porn or anything like that. They're they're grow up by the age of six now. Yeah, they, they could yeah. Uh, beat a game that I can't even think of beating. <laughs> so <laughs> right. I mean, they're they're geniuses. So oh, they're yeah. exposed. So I might oh, as well yeah, yeah. let them know the right before wrong. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We were all for sex positive, sex positivity. I think that's yeah. why we watch the the horror movies anyway, so we can see some. Always. Yeah. Oh yeah, the, I mean the boobies and the. That's why I love it. As well, the, it's kind the of the premarital sex while we're camping. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. For it's killers. stars, yeah. HBO, yeah. late night. It's both um, the best part of it and the most yeah. problematic part of it. I think. Yeah, no, this is the best ways. part. I think. Yeah. yeah. I mean, let, let's face it, it's like everybody kind of watches shit for their own prurian interests. And of know. course their parents are like, cover your eyes, but you always had your hands spread out. I mean, I mean, hell, I mean, do you see some of the movies I have over here on my fucking shelf? <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I have goddamn Human Centipede 2 on this motherfucker. <laughs> and, ne and Necromantic. <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously, I don't fuck around when it comes to shit like that. No. I, I go, sometimes I go for the hard stuff, and then I have... Shit like, spit let's say... Grave, classic, yeah, Spit on Your Grave. Oh, yeah, I Spit on Your Grave is amazing. That's a classic. That's an amazing movie. Yeah, I'm definitely a disturbing movie aficionado, but yeah, th this movie's definitely not disturbing. It's creepy and frightening, but it's nothing to that level. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and I Spit on Your Grave, that came out... Uh, definitely a PG-13. About a year or two before Halloween, right? Yeah. Or did it come out afterwards? See, Hall the original Halloween was like 1978, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 78. It's kind of late 70s, getting close to early 80s. Yeah, we're going into the 80s now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's the horror going to be like now? Right. Well, I mean, the, this movie, it pretty much uh, set the path for, uh, for horror throughout the 80s. I mean, there were some movies that were a lot different than, uh, than the slashers, you know. But slashers, they became pretty heavily proliferated... Uh, after this movie and after Friday the 13th, I mean, even a series like Hellraiser that wasn't actually a slasher movie to begin with started to kind of incorporate some slasher elements there, yeah. you know, in later iterations. Jeez, those movies are crazy. Yeah, it took a long time for them to really get down to blood and gore Yeah, to yeah. be exposed on TV. Yeah, but e even in the... Even in the horror in general, I mean, there was a lot of really gory stuff at this time. But some of the oh, best, right. some of some of the best stuff was actually pretty, pretty bloodless. You know, yeah. Like this movie and Texas Chainsaw Massacre are kind of like that. You Jessica, know, like, Jessica, Chainsaw Massacre was before that. It's like 1974. Yeah, you know? that was before that, and that's a very bloodless movie. I mean, that's not nearly as gory it's or violent. Like what they would allow. The cinematography yeah. in that, the art, the blue and red lens, and how. Oh man, it's so it, beautiful. How it looks like Texas, like in August or something. And also the the pure hell that they went through to make that movie. Oh man, like four months of the. Four months of that, like sweating, wearing the same stuff every day, sweltering heat. No like they air, had to no air conditioning. Mm. 
Gotta love Texas. God You're living out right? of a Volkswagen. <laughs> Gotta living out Texas. of a Volkswagen bus, basically changing your clothes. Pretty much, yeah. And then they, they had to uh, cover up all the windows to make everything look like night in the house, and that just made everything just swelter mm. even further. I love how they throw the blue lens over, like the moon, yeah. you know, or something. Yeah. But, I mean, I, w I wonder how much of an influence... Uh, the actual cinematography of Texas Chainsaw Massacre was on Halloween. For their their director of photography, like, what do you think? Almost, almost going for the same thing. Almost like you know. Yeah, kind, kind of sort of. He's I mean, gonna be there. He's gonna be over your back, no matter what. Oh yeah, definitely. You can run and run and run, but it's like that dream, you know. You Dude, never you, get nowhere. Exactly. You can be you can be running and running. He's right behind you. He's gonna be in front of you. Yeah, no uh -huh. right. that's no what I'm talking about. All of them. Exactly. <laughs> he is everywhere. Everywhere. That that's what they want you to feel in this movie. Mm hmm Like all throughout. Now this movie. It uh, became one of the premier slasher franchises of the 80s and 90s. Like, it, it had a very brief detour with Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, which did not feature Michael Myers at all. Because originally this was supposed to be like an anthology series, not, not unlike, uh, like, let's say, a creep show or something like that. Like, what, what do you think, Robert? Creep show? I've seen, like, maybe two episodes of it, but... Like, have you ever seen the first uh, Creep Show movie? No, I'm, I don't think so, man. Oh man, time. that's that's Stephen King and, and George Romero, man. George, oh my god, dude, you got one see I just that. watched and I yeah. showed you. Remember? Yeah, I see, dude, I, I, see I have that, that movie. We, we'll feature that on a future episode because that's a movie that you cut really got to get into. It's a, it's a lot of fun. There's still a lot of it things I haven't seen yet. Yeah, too. I mean. yeah, but but Halloween was originally supposed to be, have a standalone uh, storylines that had nothing to do with the first two. At all, like not nothing to do with each other sequentially, even. Like Halloween four, like after season of the witch was like terrible. I mean the the, the three Halloween masks that they put on and just like all the worms and shit. Oh yeah, all the worms and snakes and all yeah. that and all this shit. Best part of that movie, arguably, is the uh, silver shamrock uh, theme song. Or how his girlfriend was like a cyborg. She, yeah. You know, I mean, they're all cyborgs <laughs> at the end. Oh my He's, God, man! I, I that I was the one I told you. It kind of reminded me of like uh, uh, Tales from the Crypt or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Seen different the cover episodes. Yeah, but a after Halloween, three seasons of The Witch, Robert, where did uh, this series go? Oh, after it, that, it picked up from uh, Halloween Four, which is like introducing uh, Daniel Harris. Yeah. And it picks off from Michael Myers being burnt right after Halloween Two. Yeah. And he's burnt. You know, he's been sitting there for like almost 10 years. Yeah, know? and he's pretty much in a coma for, yeah, for a while. Yeah, he's in a coma. I mean, your muscles got to be like mush already. Yeah, but I mean, to somebody like Michael Myers, that doesn't even matter no. at all. He finds a way to break out like he always does. Uh-huh, yeah. And uh, track down his only, the only relative he does have in Hattonfield, right? Yep, his only relative. He keeps going back to Haddonfield. You know? Yeah, and he, keeps, and he keeps on trying to kill his family. At one point, he's trying to kill his niece, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then his niece has a has a child, and he tries to kill kill that child oh, as well. The niece, right? uh, Daniel Harris, yeah. which was a Halloween 4 and 5. Uh -huh. Also, Donald Pleasance was in all those. And, uh, yeah, he does. she does have a baby, which is in the Curse of the Thorn one, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. I think that's what that which was. Which is Paul Rudd. And uh, Donald Pleasant's last movie, like, in 96, right? Was that, was that Paul Rudd's first movie, or had he been doing things? Oh, he's, he's, he's been doing commercials, and that, that wasn't his first movie. I mean, in that fifth oh, yeah. one, too, uh, he's uh, bandaged up by a hermit. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, that's how he like kind of get get revived. Oh, they throw they throw dynamite down the well and they yeah, try to blow him up. Yeah, he falls down the mine <laughs> at, at the end of part four. Yeah. And then he said, wow. first he bandages him up, bandages him up, and he's he's in a coma again, and then again he doesn't come out for the next Halloween. <laughs> and the, the, this movie that that came out in the late eighties or was it the mid eighties? Which one are you on? Oh, the mid eighties. Right, 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 right in the mid eighties. Right on. What five is eighty nine? Yeah. Halloween 5 is 89. 4 is 88. I was born that year, 89. Right on, right on. 3 is 82. Mm hmm. Those are early. And 1 is 78. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And after after that, where did the series go at with uh, number 5? Oh, with Halloween H2O, it, it picked up 
But right at the end of the curse, will Paul Rudd be, or, you know, right at the end of the curse, uh, Paul Rudd beats him down, right? With, with I the think pipe. so. It's supposed to be 20 years after the second film. Yeah, exactly, that, that's Halloween H2O. H2O, yeah. And she's searching for him, she's going... Halloween H two O, which, Lee which by the way, I think should have been the end of the series. Yeah, that that should have been it. Halloween H two O in the beginning, where uh, where uh, he breaks into that house, right? And yeah. he's looking through that psychiatrist. That same psychiatrist, uh, uh, Maureen Chambers. Yeah, Maureen Chambers. She yeah, was in the original. Yeah. And um, he goes through all the files looking for Laurie Strode. Where is she at? Because wow. she had faked her death, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She faked Jamie her death. Jamie Lee Curtis. Exactly. Yeah, Jamie Lee Curtis. She faked her death, assumed another name, had a son. Had a son. Yeah. And then he kills Joseph Gordon Lovett and Ooh. his friend. Yeah, yeah. I remember that scene. That was, that was actually pretty brutal. Takes Yeah, he throws a, a an ice skate right through his face, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, straight up. <laughs> straight through his fucking face. As usual, I have nothing to do. It's your own fault, and I don't feel a bit sorry for you. Linda, Lori, why didn't you wait for me? We did. 15 minutes. You totally never showed. That's not true. Here I am. What's wrong, Annie? You're not smiling. I'm never smiling again. Paul dragged me into the boys' locker room. Exploring Count uncharted territory. To totally charted. Just talk. <laughs> sure, sure. Old Jerko got caught throwing eggs and soaping windows. His parents grounded him. He can't come over to him. I thought you were babysitting to me. The only reason she babysits is to have a oh, place shit. For. I have a place for that. I forgot my chemistry book. So who cares? I always forget my chemistry book and my math book and my English book and my, let's see, my French book. And, well, who needs books anyway? I don't need books. I always forget all my books. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't really matter if you have your books or not. Hey, isn't that Devon Graham? I think so. I think he's cute. Hey, jerk! Speed kills! Yeah, can you take a joke? into deep trouble. Totally. I hate a guy with a car and no sense of humor. Damn, so they're, they're not having her on the reboot, huh? They're not going to have her in the, the next movie and she's kind of pissed. I mean, she still looks good the way wow, she is. Wow, no, no kidding. Yeah. Two oh. movies with Daniel Harris again. Yep. Wow, that's so crazy. So she didn't uh, win Daniel that Harris, one. Yeah, yeah Daniel Harris, she was in uh, four and five. She, yeah. she, was, the, yeah. she was the niece, she right? She didn't win niece. that part. Yeah, yeah. she... Yeah. Right on. She right must on. have got married. That's what it was. Yeah, I mean, she just had a kid, too, recently. Yeah. Mm. Now, ha right. Halloween, the Rob Zombie Halloween 2 movie, like, where, where does where does that one really uh, pick up from the first zombie film? Um, right after, right after Lori shoots him He's in on the, the face. Lawn. Yeah, with Loomis's revolver. And then they, they picks off from a... Uh, Michael Myers. He's just gone. In the in the corner van, you know, in the meat wagon van. Yeah. And then yeah. you got two guys talking about how fresh these bodies are because there's a couple of young girls. Yeah. In there too, you know, and and they're driving along the highway trying to get there, and then they hit a cow, right? Yeah. It's yeah. Kind of like necrophilia. Yeah. Right? Like, like, wow. They're talking about. Wow. What the fuck? Touching them. These high fucking, school girls. Fucking are Rob. Fresh. Fucking Rob Zombie. My yeah. God. Necrophilism. Exactly. Yeah, straight and, up. Um, they hit this cow, and then he popped. Michael Myers just gets straight out like nothing happened. <laughs> like like she didn't shoot him right in the face he with a forty-five. Right yeah. Jesus Christ! He gets up. He cuts that guy's head off with a piece of glass. Damn, and then, man! I I maybe maybe I ought to see these movies. I mean, you need to watch these movies. I mean, it's it's got a good little gore hound uh, level oh, there, yeah. like a little gore hound appeal, I guess you can say. Oh yeah. Right on. They're crazy. Yeah. And what did you, what did you think of Malcolm McDowell as Loomis and Sherry Moon Zombie as Laurie? 
Um, you know what? They didn't do too bad of a job. I mean, these movies came out when I was in high school. I mean, yeah, really, this yeah. is 2007. We didn't graduate to 2008, yeah. right, Frank? Yeah. I mean, what, what do you think of McDowell's take on Loomis? How, how do you think it differs from uh, Donald Pleasant's? You know what? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I think Donald Pleasant's yeah, think will always be the original. Yeah. Yeah, but, obviously. You know, you're trying to outdo somebody who's already a... Our master, you know, pretty much. Yeah. He, he well, can never yeah. outdo him, but I think but he Malcolm, did a great Malcolm job. McDowell gets pretty close. I mean, he's yeah. got a pedigree to him, you know. I mean, oh, he yeah. was on, I mean, he was on a Clockwork I mean, Orange. He was in Caligula. He did a good know? job. He did a great job, actually. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, I think he did an excellent job. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about uh, Loomis's character in the sequel? Like yeah. he, he was, he was kind of uh, going more for like a little bit of fame, right? Like he was trying to. Oh, he's trying to sell a novel. He's trying to sell a novel. And try to, he's trying to sell the idea of Michael Myers to everybody. Yeah. He's trying to get rich off of that, really. And that, to let that people seems, know that it's a possibility that, that there's that's a lot of just, people out there like that. That's just so out of character, though, isn't it? It's mean, very out of char he character. He disappeared. For, Michael Myers dis mis disappeared. They think people stole his body. Yeah. You know, but his body wasn't there in that rick. Yeah. 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 For sure, for sure. And how about Sherry Moon as Lori? Personally, I'm not as much of a fan of Sherry Moon Zombie as I used to be. I mean, I don't really think she's that great of an actress. Like, I mean, we'd had a little take that moment earlier in the episode, you know? I mean, just for shits and giggles. But, I mean, really, I just don't see her appeal other than just sex appeal. That's I mean, I, you know, I think, like I said, I think Daniel Harris is better than everybody. I mean, she's oh, still... Oh, definitely. She she probably should have played Laurie, I think. Probably, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I think she should have played Laurie Strode in, the, in those movies. She's like 35. She's younger than her, really. Yeah, I mean... Still looking as good as she does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, easily. But yeah, I mean, how does it... I mean, it, of course, it doesn't even hold water to... To Jamie Lee Curtis, yeah, he Robert's pointing out Daniel Harris on the Halloween Two cover. It's like, okay, all right, now on the Halloween cover, where's she at? <laughs> where's she at? Oh, she dies at that one. Oh, she does. Oh shit. So, yeah, he kills her off in that one. Wow. I mean, he okay. nearly killed her in the first one, really. Yeah. Jeez, no way. Mm. Well, John Carpenter is rebooting the original movie, as we have alluded to earlier in the podcast. With uh, Danny McBride, we watched a interview with Danny McBride earlier. It was pretty interesting, you know. He uh, dropped. He gave a few hints as to where he was going to take the movie. What are your predictions for this film, uh, Frankie and Robert? What are y'all's predictions for it? I'm hoping it's going to be off the second one. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that that would be the best uh, course of action right myself. The, yeah, right, right after right 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 lost time. time. You gotta fill in some blanks. So you think they should actually go off of the Rob Zombie storyline? It wouldn't be a bad idea. Either. I, I think I mean, it'd be great. A lot of people hate what Rob Zombie did, but I think it was it's all right. You know. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's I because know. he's just become so lukewarm as a director. You know, I mean, to me, he's shown himself to be really one note, and that's because he usually is the one who writes his movies. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Exactly. He knows what direction he wants to go into. Yeah, but it's like how dark I mean, to and me, and gory to me, is. a truly good director, they can take someone else's work and make it all their own and give it all their own flourishes, and still, you know, make a great movie. I mean, that that's just what I wish that Rob Zombie would do. I wish that he would find, go and find a script that he really, really likes and sticks with it and works with it. You know. Exactly. And don't. Don't, don't, don't Hack it. have Sherry Moon Zombie in your movies anymore. <laughs> so you know, we, we get it. She's your wife. Whatever. Nah. Yeah, like, whatever. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, we're definitely excited about this reboot. It's actually a big reason why Robert uh, picked Halloween. I, I just thought it was the best time. Yeah, yeah, I mean... You know, since it's being all over the internet. Do, do we know uh, when this may be released? Is this coming out in 2019? Is it this year? Or I think they just started filming, like, you know, this year. So it may be, <coughs> it may be, a, it may be a 2019 movie, I think. Or it 20, very well could I'm be. I'm not sure. Yeah, we're going to give that a quick little fact check, more or less. But Danny McBride is a very interesting... Uh, person to be attached to this i mean he he did uh, he did have a pretty decent turn in the alien covenant movies which it's it's another movie that a lot of people had a mixed reaction to like frankie what what do you think about mcbride's uh 
involvement here. Do you think? Do you think it could lead to? It could really lead to something truly great. Like I mean, you too, Robert. What What do you really think oh, about? It's right after Aliens, right? And he he sat yeah. down with his buddy David Green to co-write this thing. So yeah, and David Green has uh, made movies such as like what? What did he make? I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's just one of his best friends in college, I think. Yeah, I've never really seen his work. Yeah. Oh, all right, all right, so. right on, right on. Well, I mean, it could probably be pretty good. I mean, maybe we need to look it up. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know who David you know. Green is really. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that that's the level of research that we do here on Collateral Cinema, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, oh, fuck no. my ass. God damn it. <laughs> Came to it, and I have to delete that shit. Oh no, no, no! We're gonna we're gonna keep that in. We're gonna keep most all of this in because you know I just say fuck it. You know, yeah. just straight up fuck it. That that's the collateral cinema way. Fuck it, and smoke weed every day. Smoke weed every day. But yes, we are definitely looking forward to this reboot. I I wish that Carpenter would direct. I mean. A lot of his most recent movies haven't been the absolute best, you know. I mean, I, I heard that that movie The Ward wasn't all that great. But I, I think that this could really bring something new to, new to the series that actually, you know, doesn't uh, go off on a tangent. It actually it would be something meaningful, you know. Yes. Right the on. Tennis. That looks like a Snoop Dogg. Dang oh, I, I, right? I think I think we're looking up David Green movies now. Like, what what, oh, what yeah. has he made? I had, uh, I had Danny Green. Danny Green. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> great job! <laughs> great job, man. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> oh, That's stellar fact checking, man. <laughs> oh, fucking this. Oh shit! How about you, Robert? What do you have? I'm just I'm still looking up when the release is gonna come out. Well, oh, right on, right on. Yeah, that would be good to get a little bit of a of a release date. Yeah, I think he's born in forty eight. The guy's old. How old is Danny McBride? They went to college together. Yeah. <laughs> he's got to be like thirty five, forty seven. Yeah, Jesus, Wait, what? Jesus Christ. Bird. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm thirty five. I was born in eighty two. Oh, so. <laughs> yeah, they don't add up. Anyway, that is our episode, ladies and gentlemen. We had a lot of fun dissecting these movies. It was a blast recording them. Uh, you can find us on Twitter. You can find us on SoundCloud. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us on Stitcher. You can find us on Podbean. We're on iTunes. Find us on Patreon. Uh, Y'all guys want to plug anything or say anything different? Nah, I'm good. Um, I'm, I'm great. You're great. All right, right on, right on. Well, ladies and gentlemen, our intro song is a license-free beat by Dark Sun. Dark Sun. You can find him on Twitter as well. All movie clips and all music are owned by their respective creators and are used for educational purposes only. And, ladies and gentlemen. 
do check out the new Halloween movie because it is going to be awesome. Yes. Right? Yes. Right, guys? All right, y'all have any any final thoughts here? Nah, y'all have a good night. Smoke some. Smoke some good herb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try to find us on Facebook. Drink a beer because we're going to yeah. rush this store to get a beer right now. Damn right, damn right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Collateral Cinema out. Out. Collateral Cinema is an L Company production.